Greetings friends, hello you, you creepy little human being you. Uh, welcome to my channel and welcome to another morbid makeup video. If you have been here before, welcome back. And if you haven't been here before, I would love it if you would join the Brat Pack by subscribing and ringing that bell. I put out new videos every week, both beauty and true crime related, and I would love to hang out with you, specifically you. So go ahead and join us. Thank you so much in advance. So today we're going to be discussing a crime spree that started as a drug robbery that went horribly wrong and turned into a two-day long crime spree that resulted in four people unfortunately losing their lives. Um, one of these people was Mariana Pujar, which if you are not familiar with her, she was a contestant on season 21 of America's Next Top Model. Beautiful, beautiful girl who tragically lost her life during this crime spree. I'm sorry, I'll hang out with you after. Go, go lay down. So I haven't seen a lot of people do a video on this case. I'm not really sure why, and I got curious myself on what all happened. I do remember watching her season. I remember it very well. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do it. I wanna see it, it doesn't exist, so I'm gonna do it. So let's just go ahead and get into it. So Mariana Pujar was born July 27th, 1995, which makes her a Leo. Mariana was a child refugee um, fleeing from Serbia with her family to New York in the year 2000 when Mariana was just five years old. From New York, Mariana then moved to Charlotte, North Carolina with her family and this is where she grew up and lived until she was tragically killed in the year 2015. So Mariana was a little bit of a troublemaker growing up. She was a bit rebellious. She skipped school a lot and got in a lot of fights. And eventually she actually ended up dropping out of school, out of high school and getting a job at a McDonald's. But she started to get her life together as one does as they get a little bit older. Um, and she ended up putting in the work to get her GED, which she did do. Um, and she actually got this GED right before being cast on America's Next Top Model. So things were starting to look up for her. You know, she finished school, she got a, a dream opportunity, and it's, you know, it's unfortunate. So things were starting to look up for Mariana. Her life was going in the direction that she wanted. So since she had been modeling since she was 12, and she stood at a really tall and lean 5'9", and was like simply gorgeous. One of the prettiest girls I think I've ever seen on that show, to be honest. Um, it was no doubt that she was chosen um, from the several thousands and thousands of applicants who would have applied for that show. Mariana had stars in her eyes and a dream of fame in her heart. She wanted to be famous. She wanted to move to a big city and make a name for herself and this was her opportunity to do so. So while in the competition, Mariana did fairly well. She made it pretty far in the show, but of course, as is common in you know reality TV shows, she did have a bit of drama surrounding her from her on again, off again relationship with one of the fellow contestants, because this was one of the ones that had guys and girls in it, um, named Denzel, to jealousy amongst other competitors. But all of the TV drama aside, she took beautiful photos because she was just like a naturally gorgeous person. Unfortunately though, Mariana's fame and time on the show was cut short with her being eliminated in the 10th episode of the season. Would Mariana have found success in the modeling industry after America's Next Top Model? Or would she instead have followed her other dream of being an actress? Or maybe she would have found some other type of happiness and success in one of the big cities she wanted to live in like Los Angeles or New York. But we're never going to know what life had in store for Mariana because just six months after the premiere of season 21 of America's Next Top Model, she would be tragically murdered at the young age of 19. Mariana is one of four people who are involved in a two day and two location drug fueled crime spree. This crime spree started on February 22nd, 2015 in North Carolina and ended on February 24th, 2015 in Texas. So this whole story started on February 22nd, 2015, when 19 year old Edward Sanchez, his 18 year old girlfriend, Emily Isaacs, and his 19 year old friend, Emmanuel Rangel. The three headed over to the Microtel in Motel under the guise of buying Xanax pills from 22 year old Rasul Harrell, I believe is how you pronounce it, um, who was selling said pills. After meeting Rasul and a friend of his in the parking lot of the hotel to, you know, do said drug deal, Edward Sanchez pulled out a gun and shot both Rasul and his friend while they sat in their car. 
Sanchez then dragged Razul out of the car where he left him on the pavement so that he could go into the car and steal his drugs and his gun. He then went to leave and before leaving he was in the car and he reached out of the car and fired more shots at the men. Rasul died as a result of his injuries, but his friend did live. So after the murder and the attempted murder at the hotel, the trio spent the night up in the mountains near the uh, North Carolina and Tennessee border. While up in the mountains, I guess uh, recapping their evening, discussing what they had just done, they decided that they wanted to rob another man they knew that sold heroin. This man's name was Jonathan Alvarado, and this was Mariana Pujar's boyfriend. So on the morning of February 24th, 2015, the two men, Edward Sanchez and Emmanuel Rangel, along with another man named David Lopez, headed over to the home of Jonathan Alvarado, Mariana Pujar, and their roommate, Huzmar Garcia. Emily Isaacs did not join this day. I guess she, you know, had had enough of the killing or something. I don't know why she didn't go, but she didn't, and instead David Lopez went. The plan was for David Lopez to sit in the car and serve as a lookout and a getaway driver while Edward Sanchez and Emmanuel um, Rangel went into the home and robbed Jonathan Alvarado of all of his drugs and all of his money. When the men knocked on the door, Mariana is the one who answered the door, and unfortunately the men immediately opened fire. Mariana was shot once in the upper chest slash neck region, and once in her upper back shoulder blade area, likely when she was turning to run away from what was happening. Jonathan Alvarado was shot once in the back of the head, and for some reason that is unknown since he wasn't even the target, Uzmar got the worst of it being shot eight times, six times in the upper back slash back of the head area, once in his arm and once in his leg. The bodies then went undiscovered for three days. The men then went back to Sanchez's house to split up their haul that they had stolen from Alvarado, which consisted of his money, his drugs, and a pair of his shoes. That night, Edward Sanchez met back up with his girlfriend, Emily Isaacs, and the two ran towards Texas. While in Texas, they were spotted by a Texas state trooper and they were pulled over. And when the car was searched, there was a lot of damning evidence against them. There were guns, there was heroin, there was Xanax, there were the shoes that were stolen from Jonathan Alvarado. And most damning, there was blood located on, um, Edward Sanchez's pants and his boots, and when tested, it was shown that this blood belonged to Mariana Pujar. So, trials obviously ensued. And two years after the murders, in April of 2017, Edward Sanchez, who was the presumed ringleader, was sentenced to life in prison for the four murders. Emily Isaacs testified against Sanchez, telling the court of Sanchez's plan for the couple to run the thousand miles to escape um, capture into Mexico. Emily herself was given a little over four years for her part in the murders in driving the two men to the first murder. Like Emily, David Lopez also testified in court against Edward Sanchez and Emmanuel Rangel. David pled guilty to armed robbery and accessory to first degree murder and he has to spend at least 10 years in prison, and after that he will be deported. And last, Emmanuel Rangel was also given life in prison for his activity in the murders. He was actually the first one arrested, I think. I think he was like the main suspect initially, but then they realized, you know, that Edward Sanchez was like the ringleader, but both men, life in prison. So that is the story of the murder of Mariana Pujar, her boyfriend Jonathan Alvarado and their, their roommate and friend Huzmar Garcia. It's so messed up, man. Drugs. <laughs> Am I right? Just to clarify, um, because you may be wondering, I didn't see anything online that said that Mariana herself was involved with drugs or used drugs. She just unfortunately happened to have a boyfriend who did deal drugs and that's just a really dangerous and messy career to be involved in, you know? I mean, I think we can all agree on that. And it's just really sad that these three, and I, I say this all the time, but it's sad that these three young lives 
had to be cut short so soon and so pointlessly. There was literally no point to it. All of the people who did it are now in jail. So what was the point? It wasn't worth it. It was stupid and it cannot be reversed. And now these people are gone forever and these other people's lives are ruined forever. Rightfully so, but like, think man, why, are, why do you do it? Why do people do that? It doesn't make any sense to me, but it, it never will because it's so far removed from what I would do in my life because I have no <sighs> homicidal tendencies. I don't know, man. But anyways, guys, that completes this video. I hope that it was informative or interesting, gave you any information you wanted on this case since you may have seeked it out or you may just be watching it because you like me either way. I hope it was what you wanted and expected. And of course, let me know any cases you'd like to see down below. I put out new videos every week. I have an ongoing list of cases, but I would love to hear your ideas because you have great ideas because you are so smart. If you made it this far, because I don't actually know who makes it to the end of the videos, let's put down what should we put makeup's pink let's put a pink heart emoji and if you don't have emojis just type pink heart just so i know you made it this far har far hmm. and of course if you haven't already make sure to join the brad pack by subscribing clicking the bell i put out new videos every week and i would love to hang out with you specifically you 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 and with that said that's it <sighs> this was tight you are tight and i hope to see you in my next video